Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 86. Here we have a sagittal T1 fat sat MRI arthrogram through the hip. And the high yield question here is, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a case of a labral tear, labral detachment, transverse ligament tear, or iliopsoas bursitis? What's the most likely diagnosis? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that this is an arthrogram, so all this high signal fluid is actually contrast. We've injected this contrast into the joint space. So that's what we see. Now there is some fluid here around the iliopsoas muscle, maybe the iliopsoas bursa, but that's iatrogenic. That's from our actual injection. But the main finding here is that we have some increased signal here, increased signal along the anterior superior labrum that suggests a labral tear. Okay. So the best answer here would actually be a labral tear. Um, the bottom line is, is that, you know, we wouldn't consider a labral detachment because the signal would really be at the labral chondral junction. So if it was right under the articular cartilage, that would suggest a labral detachment. The transverse ligament is actually this ligament right here that runs from the anterior labrum to the posterior labrum. Because remember, the labrum is not a 360 degree structure as it is in the shoulder. It's 270 degrees. It runs from here to here. But the transverse ligament is that last 90 degrees that bridges the anterior labrum to the posterior labrum. But it's certainly not torn in this case. And this is not a case of iliopsoas bursitis. This is just iatrogenic fluid or contrast from the actual injection. So the best answer here is, in fact, a labral tear. Now, hip labral tears are common. MRI arthrography is best for diagnosing them. We can see them on a non-contrast hip MRI. But really, when you do arthrography, we look for contrast that goes into the substance of the labrum to diagnose the tear. Now, there are many different causes for labral tears, most of which occur from degenerative changes from osteoarthritis or acute trauma, like in a hip dislocation or a twisting injury. And these will typically present with pain. You know, I know many people with labral tears, they complain of constant hip pain. They may have clicking, uh, pain with motion, abduction. All of these things are ways that hip labral tears can manifest uh, in clinical practice. Now, the key to making the diagnosis is looking for that increased signal, or in the case of an arthrogram, increased contrast within the substance of the labrum. And it's always important to look for the association with femoral acetabular impingement, right? The pincer and the cam types. Now, femoral acetabular impingement is a morphological abnormality of the bone that allows for you know, impingement of the bone, labrum, and or cartilage. So uh, there are two types, the pincer and the cam type that we'll discuss in a bit, but these have high associations with labral tears. So very important to consider that. Also DDH or developmental dysplasia of the hip. When you have under coverage of the acetabulum, not enough acetabulum is covering the femoral head. That also predisposes to labral tears. So let's take a look at what this normally looks like. So in a normal hip, we have the femoral head that articulates with the acetabulum here. And there's a good amount of coverage of the acetabulum. There is something called a lateral center edge opening angle that should measure between 25 to 40 degrees. If it measures more than 40 degrees, we consider that over coverage. If it's less than 25 degrees, we consider that under coverage. And that's actually what happens in developmental dysplasia of the hip when the coverage of the acetabulum on the femoral head is not sufficient. And that leads to developmental dysplasia of the hip and you can get labral tears. Now in the pincer type of femoral acetabulum impingement, see how too much of the acetabulum is covering the femoral head. And that's gonna result in impingement on the femoral neck. And you'll start to get labral tears, you'll get cartilage issues, you'll get early osteoarthritis. And that's one of the major devastating complications of femoral acetabular impingement, both pincer and cam, that you get early osteoarthritis. But in the pincer type, notice that there is more over coverage of the acetabulum. Too much of the acetabulum is covering the femoral head when compared to the normal situation. In the cam type of femoral acetabular impingement, you have this bump, this osseous protuberance at the femoral head neck junction that leads to impingement along the anterior superior acetabulum. You often get anterior superior labral tears, also get early osteoarthritis. So uh, this is a different phenomenon than pincer, but you also are predisposed to getting early osteoarthritis, predisposed to getting anterior superior labral tears. And uh, this is how it's different than the normal. In the normal situation, there's a nice offset between the femoral head neck junction, right? There's a nice offset here. But 
in the cam type, you have this osseous bump or osseous protuberance at the femoral head and neck junction that uh, leads to impingement. And then you can get labral tears and early osteoarthritis. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.